Hello class, welcome back. Today we're going to continue talking about surface area and volume. This is our eighth lesson of Unit 10. Let's begin by reviewing your homework from last night. Please pause the video while you check over your work. When you're ready to move on, press play. Today we're going to talk about marshmallow prisms. I'm very excited about this lab that you're going to do today. So at this time, please take out the Marshmallow Prisms Worksheet, along with the materials that you're going to need. So let's take a look at step one. I have recruited a friend of mine to help you with demonstrating what you need to do to complete Prism A. Okay, with the holes either on the left side or the right side of your paper, it really doesn't matter. You're going to fold this paper in half doing a hot dog fold. Do a real good, clean, crisp fold right there. That crease has got to be good. Flip it over and fold it again, just so it's well defined. Okay. Now open up your hot dog, and you're going to take both edges and fold towards the middle right here. So we have four distinct sections. Good, sharp crease right there. Repeat that process. Flip it over. And now we got to do it again. All right, not overlapping. We've got four good sections here. One, two, three, four. We stand it up. What we're going to do is make a rectangular prism. We have to take the edges. So I'm going to take the two edges and put them together, just like that. I'm going to take a piece of tape, and when they're put together, just put tape on one side of the paper. You'll fold it over, and it will grab the back side. Same thing down here. One side of the paper, fold it over, and now you have a rectangular prism. You might have to fix your creases a little bit. Standing up. Once it's taped and you've formed it, I want you to measure it. I want you to measure the height of it in inches, the length, and the width. Once you have your three measurements on your paper, label this prism A. Now let's take a look at what you need to do to complete step two. We finished prism A. We're gonna repeat this whole process, but this time we're gonna use blue paper, and we're gonna make a hamburger fold in the middle. So corner to corner, good sharp crease, Flip it over, one more crease, all right? Open it up when that is done, and you're gonna fold the left and the right side in towards the middle again. One side, and now the other side. Don't overlap them. Unfold and refold so that you have two good sharp creases there. Open your paper, and we've got our four sections again. Now stand it up. We're gonna put the two edges together, just like we did before. One piece of tape at the top, one side only. Fold it over so it catches the back. This side, fold that piece of tape over so it catches the back. Stand it up, and we have another prism. This is gonna be prism B. Guess what, you're gonna do the measurement, height, width, width, and depth. When you've done those three measurements, label this blue one prism B. Now at this time, take a look at your table, and you need to make sure that you have labeled the dimensions for prism A and the dimensions for prism B. We have two prisms here. One is tall, one is shorter. One is skinny, one's a little bit wider. If we were to fill this with marshmallows, which one do you think would hold more? The tall skinny or the short wider one? Make a prediction right now. Prism A, prism B. Now at this time you need to complete the prediction section of your worksheet. At this time please pause the video while you complete these questions when you're ready to move on. Press play. 
Now at this time I would like for you to complete step three. Make sure you fill out and describe down here in the space provided what happened when you lifted prism A and the marshmallows fell into prism B. So now comes the fun part. I'm going to put prism A inside prism B. And I'm going to take my cup of marshmallows and I'm going to fill out prism A as far as I can. Don't get any in prism B. I'm filling, filling, filling. Got to go back and get more. And don't eat the marshmallows. They've been on the floor. And they've been touched by other sixth graders. Still not full. It's holding a lot. Alright. So let me pick up what I dropped here. And I think it's pretty full. Okay, next step. I'm going to lift up prism A slowly. And as I lift it up, the marshmallows are going to fall into prism B. Here goes. Do you think it will overfill it? It's coming. Look at that. Did prism A fill prism B? Now at this time, please complete the following nine questions on your own. Please pause the video while you complete these nine problems. When you're ready to check your answers, you can press play. However, I want you to look at question number nine. Question number nine is a challenge question. It's going to take you a little bit of time to figure that out, but please do not look at the answers until you have tried um, to work out number nine on your own. So please pause the video at this time, complete these questions when you're ready to check your answers. You can press play. Alright, so let's go over the answers to these problems. If you look at number four, calculate the volume of prism A. The volume of prism A is 49.7 cubic inches. You can see that the length and the width is 2.125 and then the height is 11. And the volume for prism B is 64.3 cubic inches and the length and width is 2.75 and the height is 8.5. For problem number six, explain why the prisms do not hold the same amount. It's because the prisms have different dimensions, so the volume will be different. Number seven, what do you notice about the length and the width? The length and the width, they're both the same. And if you rewrite the formulas with only two variables, the volume would be length squared times height or width squared times height. Okay, so for number nine, how much by how much would you have to decrease the height of prism B to make the volumes of the two prisms equal? So the volume of prism A is 49.7. So if you take the height, the length, and the width of prism B, 2.75 times 2.75 times what will give you a volume of 49.7. The height is 6.6. .6. So the current height of prism B is 8.5. So you would have to subtract 8.5 minus 6.6, .6, and that's what the height needs to be in order to have the same volume as prism A. And so you would have to decrease it by about 1.9 inches. You have now completed the Marshmallow Prism Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. Now you, you can apply what you learned here. When you go to the movies and you go to pick out the popcorn boxes, which size you would like. So you can think about this in many different um, situations. So I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned a lot from it. Now for homework tonight, you need to complete the study guide, all 20 questions. Please make sure you complete this on your own and you're ready to check over your answers tomorrow. Remember, the study guide looks exactly like the test. I just changed some of the problems around. So good luck and have a great afternoon.